Yes, the next presentation will be given by Vishva Vijayav Singh. Oh, I'm not sure to <laughs> say correctly, the, sorry. <laughs> uh, from Leibniz University, Hanover. Um, uh, and the subject is about uncertainty determinations of uh, EOP from LLR by parameter variation during data analysis. Hello. Hi. Yeah, the, present, the pronunciation was quite okay. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Vishwa Vijay Singh, and I'm working at the University of Hanover in Lunar Laser Ranging. Um, I'm going to be talking about the uncertainty determination, uh, particularly right now about Earth orientation parameters. Uh, but before moving on, uh, I just want to quickly thank the, uh, the people at the observatories who take these very wonderful readings, which have been giving us very nice results off late. So the mean error of the most recent uh, readings is about 0 0.1 nanoseconds, which amounts to about 3.2 centimeters. And as Lilian pointed out in the EFO, normal point data set, we have about 30,000 normal points, so that's quite good um, going forward with the calculations. So talking about what the presentation is going to be about is the uncertainty determination. Um, what recently happened was that we were uh, we had a publication about the EOPs where it was questioned wh whether what we do about the uncertainty is correct or not, so we look decided to look into it. Uh, this is basically a basic flowchart of how the least square just, uh, estimation works, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but essentially what happens is that when we define the stop criteria and when we say that, okay, our, uh, we have achieved, we have achieved uh, our final calculation, we get to the variance covariance matrix, which gives us the variance and therefore the, square, uh, therefore the uncertainty, which is going to be represented as sigma on the further slides. Um, what really happens at Lunar, at EFA, and the standard calculation is that we give three times the standard deviation, and we give this as the regular we give this as the regular value, saying that this is the correct uncertainty uh, with a scaling factor of three. And why we do this is because of multiple different reasons, which were particularly pointed out even before I was born, uh, between communication between Professor Bender and the Professor Jürgen Müller. Uh, which relates to basically correlations between different normal points that we have uh, and also uh, the uncertainty of different groups of adjusted parameters, which is what I'm going to be doing, uh, and some systematic and random errors. We've been publishing papers with three sigma uncertainty uh, in the past, which, is, which was never challenged, but since it was, we decided to look into what's really happening over there. Um, so, as I said, I'm going to be discussing this in the ambit of Earth rotation parameters. Uh, essentially, what we do is we just create subsets of normal points that we have per night. Um, on any one night, we could have anything between one normal point, and if I'm not wrong, it goes up to 50 or 60 on the best possible nights. So what we do is basically create subsets and select nights on which a particular minimum number of normal points were achieved. Um, when I do this, before I move on to show you different, different results, I'll just explain that I'm doing all of the Earth rotation parameters which were calculated were calculated for four subsets. Now, just talking about this first subset, it is basically the minimum number of points here were 10. So basically, minimum 10 number of normal points on any night. It could be 25, it could be 65. Uh, and they were observed from at least one observatory. Uh, and the further strict criteria that the same minimum number of 10 normal points are observed from at least two observatories. So this is basically a slightly stricter um, selection of this particular subset and so on with this 15 number of normal points. So we don't have a number of, lot of number of nights as pointed out by Lilian, but we do achieve some decent results. And especially if we talk about the most recent data, post 2015 or something, we are getting a lot of number of nights because of the very nice readings from OCA. Um, and then the results become very interesting. So what really happens is before I again show on, show on the results, I'm basically calculating four cases. So these cases are represented as 1.1, 1.2, 2.1, .1, and 2.2. What's really happening is in the first case, we are essentially using the velocities of LLR observatories from our own solution because we also adjust them as a part of the LSA procedure. Uh, in a second case, we are just, we are, so, sorry. Uh, in the second case, they are fixed to the ITR of 2020 values. Um, so basically with this, we create two subsets and then further two sub cases where non-earth rotation parameters and earth rotation parameters were adjusted in the point one, which is 1.1 and 2.1. And in the second case, only the earth rotation parameters were adjusted. Now that you know what I'm going to be showing you in the three different values, essentially for every earth rotation parameter that we're getting, we're getting one value X and it's uncertainty delta X, which I said was three sigma, as I pointed out on the previous slides. What we want to find out now is essentially if this three sigma is correct. Um, from the four different calculations that I'm getting, I'm getting four different values of each earth rotation parameter. So I basically just take its range as the maximum minus minimum. And I'm going to be comparing this range to the three sigma to understand if basically what we're showing is somehow correct or not. 
Uh, when I look at the uncertainty for XP, this is a lot of numbers, so please hold on before you start reading them. Just look at them row by row. What you see is that from all the different cases that we have, the uncertainty before 2000 and after 2000 segregated here with the time span looks very similar for all the four cases in each row. Uh, this essentially indicates that the calculation is quite robust and whether we adjust or fix certain parameters, the uncertainty stays quite similar, which looks very good. But when we compare these numbers to the range in any particular row, you will see that the range is quite small. Uh, and therefore, perhaps the three sigma is not the correct value when we talk about um, estimation of XP from lunar laser ranging. What's also quite interesting is that the point 0.1 and the point, uh, the 1.1 and 2.1 cases always show their uncertainty slightly bigger than the, those of the point 0.2 cases, which is basically an indication that perhaps even with extremely large number of normal points, LLR might not be the best at estimating a, a polar motion coordinates. Uh, when we talk about the uncertainty of YP, the polar motion, other polar motion coordinate, basically the trend is entirely the same. Uh, the range is much smaller than the, that of the three sigma values that we represent, and therefore essentially our conclusion about this particular slides is that one sigma would be correct. Once again, it's every row, the numbers look quite uh, similar, therefore we would say that the calculation is quite robust. Um, but when we do this with delta UT, and I think that's more interesting because XP and YP can be estimated from different, many different techniques and delta UT only from VLBI and LLR. Um, I think it's quite interesting that when we looked into this, the, even though all numbers, the same robust calculation worked out quite well for us, what we looked into the range, we realized that basically the numbers look quite similar. And therefore the three sigma range looked quite good overall. Um, obviously if we take the worst subsets of nights, which is before 2000, uh, with a loose selection criteria, uh, the range is slightly bigger than that of the three sigma. And if we take the best case scenario, which is post 2000 and very strict selection criteria of nights, uh, we get a case which is uh, where the range is smaller than the three sigma. But overall, it looks quite good. Um, in contrast to how the polar motion coordinates were behaving, we also see that uh, that the UT is estimated much better when it is estimated with the lunar lasering, lunar laser ranging parameters, uh, which gives a quite good relation. We also looked into the correlations and we saw that neither for polar motion coordinates nor for, X, nor for delta UT values, they were exceptionally high. So this just gives a good indication that uh, LLR um, can give us very good results of uh, delta UT. I would also want to point out that just before this presentation, I opened my laptop to see that my normal point file is only 2.6 megabytes, which is less data than what VLBI can get in 0 0.1 seconds. So considering that, when we compare our results with that of VLBI, I think it looks quite decent. Um, obviously, also we looked into uh, things other than the Earth rotation parameters, so we looked into this for all the standard parameters. Uh, and we realized we basically, once again, did the same sort of calculation where we created many different cases. Um, where we fixed certain parameters and adjusted the others. And when we compared the results of all of them to the range to that of the three sigma, we also realized that yes, three sigma is bigger than the range. Uh, which brings me to my conclusions. So essentially for all parameters other than delta UT, what I showed right now, we would be further on going on presenting only the one sigma values because we think that they give a quite a good idea of the estimation that we are at at the moment. When it comes to delta UT, we are giving three sigma values right now. Uh, but as I showed you with the with more number of years of data and more number of nights acquired over time, um, because we have quite good results right now. Uh, two sigma uncertainty in future looks very realistic. So per perhaps the results that I'm showing to you right now, which are best results here for three sigma is 16.42 uh, XP and uh, YP. The 16.42 could then eventually turn into maybe 10 or 11, or if the data becomes much better and better, it could go on to eight microseconds. Um, the current resolution of the results for delta UT is about 7.5 millimeter on the Earth's equator. So it's, overall, it looks quite good. Um, and we have more data coming in, so if anybody wants to, correlate, wants to uh, have a combined study, we could do that. Uh, for relativistic parameters, similar tests will be performed because when we look into the relativistic parameters, the history of it, we see that we have published five, seven, five sigma, seven sigma, and so on and so forth. So perhaps for them, the similar study could be performed. Uh, and with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you very much. Thanks for the talk. There was a record. There was 12 slides in less than 10 minutes. Very good. Thanks. I just wanted to catch up. We have to keep up. We have to speed up. So you saved us some time for the coffee break. All right. Any questions? None. Do we have an online question? Bea, do you see something? No? Okay. Um, Clement, do you have a... There is one? All right. Please. 
So there is a question from Frank Lemoine. Uh, is delta minus ET1 better determined on nights when the lunar retroreflectors are observed on the same night by more than one observatory? Yes, this is definitely true. So we d do get a bit longer time span. So essentially, if only one observatory is observing normal points per night, it's around 12 hours of night, roughly, for one observatory. But when they are at ge different geographical locations, uh, the the averaging that we're doing over 12 hours can increase. And therefore, we also need uh, observatories on the other side of the Earth and not just based in Europe and America. So if you have something in Australia or Japan or something would be very, very good, we would get a longer time span and uh, therefore definitely better results. Okay, any other question in the room? I don't think so. Then thanks again and we move on to the next speaker. Thank you.